Up next is the founding co-artistic director of Old Trout Puppet Workshop, who is also an assistant professor of acting and drama in the School of Creative and Performing Arts at the University of Calgary. Please put your, heart, your hands together for a warm welcome for Peter Balco. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, what a hilarious gathering of ideas of craft. This is insane. <laughs> Um, I'm going to use a script. I'm at that point in my life where I can't even remember my kids' names. So uh, I'll fly it this way. And, and I'll just give you a brief context of what I'll talk about. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, a community of people gathered and created a, a performance and artistic response to uh, the return of the buffalo to Banff National Park. The, the name of the project was Aniskam, and it was built in residence at Camp Chief Hector YMCA. Then it was performed in Banff and then in Calgary. So uh, I'll craft that up. I'm really terrified of this red button. I just have to say that. I'm gonna have dreams about this thing tonight. It's terrible, there's a sign telling me press the red button, uh, but I'll do it. Okay, here we go. Is that feedback? Is that coming from me? Is it? Okay, I'll step back, here we go. Uh, much of my professional work is centered around puppetry and the innovation of this convention with a keen push to move it out of the literal form and embrace an abstract application. Effective formats for this investigation are the 16-day intensives that I facilitate in Banff, Alberta and Williamstown, Massachusetts. In 2014, we began to explore lantern art as a means to expand our understanding of how to integrate immersive puppetry experiences into the outdoors. We work from a mandate that in performance, the strength of the puppet sits most in the visual form. Through the silent narrative and in the abstract form, puppets are able to access a greater sense of poetry in the expression of relationships, emotions, the curious possibilities of finding yourself in a new moment. It is dark. You are outside with strangers. This immediate moment has never happened before. Because we work in the spirit of collective creation and because the occasion is linked to unbridled exploration of what puppetry can be, a hybrid to the literal sometimes comes out. New creatures emerge and we find ways to invest our bodies into the application. In January of 2017, the Government of Canada, along with a number of First Nation communities in Western Canada and Northern United States, pushed forward an agenda to reintegrate bison as a natural element of the environment. To live as a species. The occasion presented itself as an opportunity to bring together different communities and different cultures within the region of the Buffalo to explore the implications of this huge event and celebrate it in artistic ways. We sought guidance from a number, number of First Nation elders and knowledge keepers and drew together a core of artists to initiate the project. We opened the process up to other artists, both young and old, from communities within the region of the Bison. The greater mandate of the process was to sequester ourselves outside into the fabric of the natural landscape to allow the challenge of remote creation to inform the direction of how we would engage eventually with an audience. We toured the landscape of the buffalo and allowed their story to influence our own understanding of each other as people. To give you scope, there were once over 300 million buffalo in North America. They were exterminated down to 90, nine, zero. We begin to understand that some of our, the members of our team Oh, we toured the landscape of the buffalo and allowed their story to influence our own understanding of each other as people. Uh, we begin to understand that some of the members of our team once had a connection to this creature that transcends identity. It was a visceral part of their existence, like an arm, a leg, or a heart. The elders show us how their ancestors made record of the buffalo thousands of years ago, how this animal brought balance to the world by providing all manner of possible life not only to the people of the land, but also to the land itself. Early drawings etched in stone inspire some of the characters of our story. Back at camp, we begin to push ourselves into the dirt, 
Puppetry is a physical form, a dance between object and person, between emotion and objective. We must tune our bodies to the task of making this connection. The rustic studio setting forces us to live in simple ways. There's no heat, no water. It takes work to set up the most basic needs like coffee. But this work makes us physically stronger and the bits of the earth that we take for granted begin to direct our art. The materials that we use are all natural and simple. And the act of working with our hands occupies our bodies so that conversation finds a natural and honest path. We begin to relax and share ourselves through story. Through this connection, we begin to grow as people and as a family. The puppets begin to emerge and we discover a relationship between the literal and the abstract. It is hard to find a wild buffalo alive in front of your eyes, so imagination offers a possible shape. We follow a golden rule, never finish your puppet, for that is the job of the observer. In another step in bringing the ensemble closer, we venture into the backcountry to get closer to the home of our subject, but to remind ourselves that we need each other to survive. Not only through the rigor of creation, but also the simple act of being. The act of living together in ways that are at times uncomfortable have built a foundation of caring that allow us to invest in the collaborative and collective choreography needed to execute our ambition. It's hot, we sweat, we grunt like wild beasts, but we also now care about each other. Then there are breaks and we go throw stones. In a sense, this too becomes a strange dance with nature. We loosen up a bit, we laugh, in an odd way, we ourselves become puppets in the world. We need to rehearse in the dark and remember how to walk without being able to see anything. We need to feel the ground and know that we are on it to be safe. We also don't count on the fact that our great art will attract every insect with wings at night. <laughs> Bug chambers become our new challenges. In the end, we are diversity connected together. Blackfoot, Stony Nakoda, Francophone, Anglophone, young and old, we are here to share a story, to share ownership of that story, to become a family, and to grow together in that way. The journey is one of hope and of returning. We return to the darkness of night and remember forgotten familiarities within it. We remember a moment where all of nature is connected and we, all of us, have our place in it. Thank you.